Good evening. We're on assignment in Panama City tonight. This is a notorious money laundering center. It's also where the first tower to be built outside the United States and carry the name Trump on it was built. Our investigation, as you'll see, shows that criminals from all over the world use this building as a laundromat for their money. But the Trump Organization doesn't actually own the building. It made a licensing deal with a local developer. So the president basically just gets paid for the use of his name. Does that mean he can't be held responsible for any of the criminal activity that happened here? The Trump Organization says it does mean just that. But anti-corruption experts disagree. It's a question of good business practice, they say. And because we have a president who owns a global business, business practices matter. Here's our exclusive investigation in conjunction with our friends at Reuters into that building. Buenos dias. Hello, I'm Ivanka Trump. Welcome. It to was Trump the Ocean first Trump-branded tower to go up overseas, and the first Trump project Ivanka led from inception. Visit our lobby concierge, our beautiful pool deck, our 10,000 square foot, our state-of-the-art fitness our Cava 15, our exclusive beach club. No request is too large or too small for our team. Now that sense of ownership is gone. The Trump Organization, which no longer runs the building, says it had no hand in vetting the people who financed, sold, or bought it. Now that President Trump is in the White House, mm -hmm. do you think the Trump Organization and the Trump family are trying to distance themselves from you? I wouldn't say that they're trying because I don't think that I can harm them. It took months to track Alexander Ventura down and persuade him to sit down for an interview. He asked that we disguise his appearance. He's on the run from the law in Panama, where he's wanted for fraud. He says he sold hundreds of units in the Trump Ocean Club to people who also went to a lot of trouble to hide their identities. And the banks weren't asking any questions where the money was coming from? No, never. Sounds like nobody was asking any questions. Nobody was asking, no, no. Not you, not the Trump Organization, not the banks, not the developers, no, nobody. Nobody. Nobody checked anybody out. So people were buying, spending millions for, for apartments Richard, that existed on paper. Richard, they were buying paper. 5, 10, 20 units at a time. The money would go to Ventura. If you want to know about the flow of dirty money through Panama, Monty Friesner is the man to ask. In 1992, he was convicted in federal court of 20 counts of money laundering and fraud. He still knows all the players and all the plays. Do you think it's possible Trump didn't know the kind of people he who were buying know. in his building? He didn't know. How could he not have known? Because you don't walk up to somebody and say, hey, are you Russian mafia? Do you think it's fair to say that Trump didn't ask because he didn't want to know? Would you want to know? I would want to know who was buying a building That's that has my name on it. Because it's you, most known. They don't care. A team from Global Witness, an anti-corruption watchdog that is often critical of businesses and their connections to government officials, spent months investigating Trump-branded properties around the world, and especially the one in Panama. Patrick Alley is the group's co-founder. It was a money laundering hotspot. Any responsible businessman should want to know who their clients are and where the money is coming from. If that responsible businessman is now the president of the United States, this is a matter of public interest. The idea for the Trump Ocean Club was born long before the businessman became president. It was in the 2000s. On his hit TV show, The Apprentice, CEO Trump made all the decisions. You're fired, fired, fired. You're all fired. But his children were joining the family business, and Ivanka Trump suggested that they take the Trump brand global. Panama seemed like a good place to start. Well, my interest in Panama really began when we had the Miss Universe contest in Panama, which I own. I own the Miss Universe, and it was one of the most successful contests we've ever had. So I was in Panama. I was there for quite a bit of time with the Miss Universe, and I fell in love with the place. But the Panama he was falling in love with was not the Panama where more than a third of the population lived in poverty. It was the glamorous waterfront where brand new luxury towers were being snapped up by the international hot money crowd. Plain loads of people were coming because they would advertise in Miami, Toronto, Russia, and they were pre-selling all the buildings. And the more they built, the more they sold. But nobody ever occupied the apartments. They were empty buildings. They were empty buildings. 
The buildings, Friesner says, were a great place to bury dirty money. He says the buildings were almost literally made of drug money. Cocaine concrete. What is cocaine concrete? It's the money it's, that came from cocaine. A lot of it was drug money. So you take the cocaine and you turn it into a building. Yeah. How do you know all of this? I was directly involved. I saw it happening. It was this booming market that the Trump Organization was entering. Plans, as seen in this marketing illustration, were drawn up for an ambitious tower, the tallest in Latin America at the time, with a mix of hotel rooms and high-end condos. All on a plot of land owned by a small-time local businessman, Roger Kafif, who was going to be the building's main developer. Ivanka traveled to Panama to meet the team. Roger introduced me and my company would be selling the units. According to Ventura, Ivanka was planning to pre-sell units for around $120,000 each. Ventura said he could sell them for a lot more. What did she say when you told and her so that? And so she was happy with that. She said, but can you sell it at that price? I said, yes. So the agreement was I had a week to sell 100 units. How did you sell 100 units in a week? It was easy to sell, in fact, you know, with his name. The name of the most famous man in real estate who was also the building salesman in chief. One of the great things about Panama, not only the beautiful building, but the incredible views. The name Trump was magic. And uh, he came down, Donald Trump came down. He, he has a great presence. I mean, he's a fabulous uh, uh, marketing person. But according to Ventura, it was Ivanka Trump who handled all the details. What kinds of things did Ivanka do? Meeting with the architects, deciding the, 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 the finishings of the project, uh, the prices, uh, when it's going to be released, when it's not going to be released, uh, everything related to the project. Because according to the contract, Trump Organization has to approve everything because of his name on the project anyway. So it sounds like the Trump Organization, specifically Ivanka, was deeply involved. Yes, I mean, she was the person uh, responsible for the project. Ventura, who had a small real estate agency, was now selling the Trump brand. He had made the big leagues. He became overnight a mover of money. Who was it that Ventura and the firm Holmes were targeting? Russians. Russians that had dirty money. Specifically? Specifically. And then the Russian mafia came in, a guy called... Uh, Alexander Sasha Altschul. And what was he doing down in Panama? He came down, made a proposal to Ventura, and uh, made him an offer he couldn't refuse. Altschul became a partner in Ventura's marketing firm, but we can't verify his connection to the Russian mafia because although the allegation has been repeated in several court cases, Altschul seems to fend off the charges every time. Another partner, Stanislav Kavalenka, also bought several units in the building. He has since been accused of running a prostitution ring in Canada, but the case was dropped when both key witnesses disappeared. The firm's representative in Kiev, Igor Anapolsky, was later found by a Ukrainian court guilty of people smuggling. One of the customers who bought units in the building was an ex-convict who served time in Israel for kidnapping. And those are just the ones we managed to identify. While claiming he didn't know it at the time, Ventura now admits that he was selling units in the building to members of the Russian Mafia. I had some customers with some, uh, you know, questionable uh, uh, background. What does that mean? I mean, you know, you, I found out later, not in the beginning, from like it belongs to Mafia, the Russian Mafia, or things like that. But anyway, I was not getting paid in cash. That is not the story we heard from Friesner. They used half a dozen lawyers would come pick up a million dollars in a satchel. That was happening at the Trump Ocean Club? Yeah. So Ventura was marketing the Trump Ocean Club as part of a real estate portfolio where corrupt people could park their money. You got it. And they did. Yeah. But they didn't just park their money. Their money was turned over co consistently. So how does a luxury tower become a money laundromat? Here's how it works. The buyer uses dirty money to buy, say, unit 1605 in the unbuilt tower. Then 
Sometimes just two weeks later, Unit 1605 gets resold. The money coming out of the building is now clean, the proceeds of a legitimate real estate deal. The only way to trace its dirty origins would be to go back to the beginning and identify the original buyer. And that should be relatively easy, but not in Panama. Our investigation led us here to Panama's public registry. After going through a lot of paperwork, a pattern started to emerge. It turns out many of the condo units aren't owned by individuals, but Panamanian corporations, often with generic names like Ocean Trump 1605 Investment Corporation. So why would someone use a corporation to buy a condo, often to hide the identity of the real buyer? One of the things with, uh, with these shell companies is you can simply transfer the, the, the company, the, the buyer, the bear share to anybody you want. So you set up a shell company, nobody knows who, who the actual owner is. No. Then you buy the unit, you get a piece of paper that says you own the unit. You're the owner. And then you can do with, with what you want it's, with that piece of paper. You're holding money. You're holding a million dollars. It's not even a check. In a bear share. And you can transfer it to anybody. And you could fold it and put it in your pocket. Correct. And you were coming in with hundreds of buyers. Did the Trump Organization want to know who these buyers were, where the money was coming from? No, not that I'm aware of, you know, no, not at all. Did they ever ask you? Mm, no. Were these buyers planning on living in these units, in these apartments? Most of them, no. And that never raised alarm bells with you? There's somebody buying 15 units, doesn't want to live in the place from, from Russia? No, because that was normal. They had laundry money, that's their problem. And it wasn't just Russians. One of the most famous money launderers in the world, David Murcia Guzman, bought units in the building too. We met a former Panamanian prosecutor, Mauricio Ceballos, who worked on the Guzman case. A mí me toca la investigación. The David Murcia Guzman investigation was a vast case, and as part of it, we had information that Alexander Ventura was Guzman's partner. We heard the same thing from Friesner. Guzman and Ventura, what was their relationship among between them? They were what was business the partners. They became, after a couple of years, business partners. How did they work together? How did, that, how did their collaboration he would bring work? The money, David would bring the money in, and the money would get distributed. What about uh, Guzman? Ventura. They basically slept in the same bed. Guzman is in U.S. custody, convicted of laundering millions of dollars for Mexican drug dealers. Were you? No. Guzman's no, no, man I had, I had, I had 45 days with him, and we never talked about anything illegal, you know. But he did admit that he and Guzman did some business together. So you moved some of Murcia Guzman's money into the Trump Ocean Club? Yes, I did, yes. How many units? And there was not many, I, I think maybe maximum 10 units. Did you investigate uh, Ventura? Si, Alexander Ventura Nogueira, si. Yes, Alexander Ventura was under investigation for fraud. And what did you find out? Bueno. Well, at the time I was working four or five fraud cases he was involved in. Fraud because Ventura seems to have gotten too greedy. After a while, collecting a 3% commission wasn't enough. He started selling units on paper in several buildings to more than one buyer at a time. Eventually, his pyramid scheme collapsed. He was arrested and charged with fraud. Somehow, he managed to get bail and escape the country. In a statement to NBC News, a spokesman wrote that the Trump Organization was not the owner, developer, or seller of the Trump Ocean Club Panama project, and that the Trump Organization was not responsible for the financing of the project and had no involvement in the sale of units or the retention of any real estate brokers. The spokesman said the Trump Organization had no relationship with Ventura or knowledge of the allegations against him. We also asked Ivanka Trump for comment, but her team referred us back to this statement. I believe this is the picture of you with President Trump. Yes, that's correct. That's in Mar-a-Lago, yes. So you're meeting with him, you stop, you pose for the photograph. Yes. Ventura didn't mind showing us old pictures, as long as we didn't show what he looked like now. And your interaction with him is... Good job, keep, keep up the good work, keep selling. Keep selling, that's it. How many units did you personally sell? I believe that I sold about between 350 to 400 units, you know, from the project. 
So that would be worth how much? Um, over a little bit over 100 million. Over 100 million dollars. Yes. When the Trump organization goes into a licensing deal, when it, it sells its name and its brand, on one side, the Trump organization is deeply involved. The family are involved. So they can be very hands-on, very, very interested when they want to be. When it comes to problems, like there might be some dodgy money involved, there might be some dodgy clients, they don't want to know. That's the developer's responsibility. That's not our responsibility. Look, you spent your life around criminals or investigating criminals. I was criminals, a criminal. Being a criminal. Yeah. What do you think about the kind of business that Trump was lending his name to? I'm not trying to protect him, uh, but he is not the one that's doing all of this. He simply has a name, a uh, corporation, and that, that's what it is. Do you think people should be judged by the company they keep and the businesses they run? Definitely, 100 percent. If I was somebody like Trump, I'd do a background check. I'd want to know who they buy their underwear from. So there isn't any connection to any form of crime. As a former money launderer, the Trump Ocean Club, how would you rate it? And it's for money quality. laundering? For money laundering. Uh, I'd say triple A. Now, there is no suggestion that the president or his family were directly involved in any of the illegal activity that went on here. As we said, they were just licensing out the Trump brand and initially managing the building. It's just that this building was a magnet for dirty money, and we found no sign of an attempt by the Trump Organization to protect that brand, which is perhaps now our nation's most prominent brand from being tarnished by association. The building was opened in 2011. One. And on stage were three men, our future president, the developer, Kafif, and Panama's president, who was then a close friend. Thank you very much for being here today, and you're my friend. Martinelli is now awaiting an extradition decision in a jail cell in a federal detention center in Miami. We'll tell you that whole story next. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.